Thank you. Broadcasting Company brings you something very special today. Wrapped about conspiracies and fraud. EBC presents to you the one and only. Straight out of Venice, Marco Polo. <laughs> Not that kind of Marco Polo. <laughs> this one right here. Marco, how are you doing today? Hey, Marco. Hi, It's time to have you on set today. Honor being here. Thanks for having me. Before we get into your stories, explain your background a little bit. Now, I know you've been to many places around the world, seeing many things, but out of all those places, which one do you call home? Well, Kyle, I was born in the Republic of Venice in 1254, and even though I was, I was uh, born by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Niccolò Polo, I was uh, raised by distant relatives, since my mother, God bless her soul, died when I was a young boy, and my father and my uncle Mafio were uh, always, tra always trading, so even though it was hard for me, I uh, got over it, and by the age of 15, I was ready to go out and explore. Well, I'm very sorry about your parents. That must have been very sad and tough to get over, you know, at such a young age. But I'm glad, you know, that you got over it and, and you know, you develop into this uh, great and honorable man that you are today. I'm very sorry about your mother. But when you were young, did you always want to be an explorer? Yes, sir, I think I did. And so, um, as I said, my uncle and my father were, uh, were, were avid traders. So they always um, told me about their stories, about all the vast lands and all the empires it just it intrigued me, so it really enticed my uh, view of the world and traveling and just wanted to get out there, you know, if I just getting boring, I wanted to go out and explore. Well, I'm really glad to hear that, but viewers, we will be right back. You can hear, see, a little snippet of the new Netflix series, Marcos Polo, starring your own. Uh, thank you. All my life, I waited for the great adventure to offer me a place at his side. When I was a child, I heard voices. Some would sing and some would scream. We wish to pay tribute to my kind from my journeys along the Silk Road. There to be my turn. If it pleases your greatness, you may take my son. Father, what are you doing? Father. Margaret, this will not be forever. The walls of my kingdom stretch beyond the horizon. To report what you see, the way things truly are. Tread carefully, Master Polo. Your words can get you killed. I can train you to survive in whatever world you choose to make your home. This is not my home. China, Mongolia, I will be emperor of the world. We'll never surrender the last stronghold of the Song Dynasty. You are not one of them. You understand nothing. Go too deep, and you will not return. My prisoner. Answer me! Every corner of the land beneath this blue sky is ours for the taking! A man who proves his loyalty to me can take whatever he wishes. So, Marco, we know everything about your family life, your childhood, but now into the stuff that everyone wants to know. So, who, um, when did you decide to leave Venice and, you know, journey to China? Who was with you? Well, uh, me, my dad, and my uncle, we uh, all went to uh, China in 1271. We uh, left for our journey because we were invited by uh, the great Kublai Khan to uh, visit his court. It was great, great for me because I'm only 17 years old. Oh wow, 17, that's pretty, you know, to work in uh, Kublai Khan's court, that's, that's a pretty young age, that's pretty cool. But uh, when did you finally get to China? Well, uh, the, the journey took us four years. We uh, passed through many, uh, many lands. We passed through Persia, which is now Iran, uh, Turkey, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. And uh, we went through mountains, we even went through the Gobi Desert. Mm -hmm. But uh, we finally got there, and we finally got to the capital, Shantou, in 1275. 
Wow, and um, you know, you hear about Kublai Khan, how he was a really famous, you know, and good emperor, but you were in his court and you knew him, so, you know, how was your relationship with him? How was he like? Oh, when we got there, he, uh, you know, very warm welcome, because he already met my uh, dad and uncle before. And uh, he, he made me one of his advisors. Since I spoke his tongue, we were very, uh, very close in front of him very quickly. So, what did you do in China? Well, as I said, I was an advisor. So, I, uh, you know, did a lot of things for him. I, um, pretty much just, you know, went around the empire, um, getting all the events down and, like, giving him a detailed report of everything that's happening in this kingdom. And, uh, it allowed me to, uh, learn a lot of the culture from, uh, China. Oh, wow, that must have been a really cool experience, going all over, exploring. Now, you know, it seems like such a cool place, China. When and why did you leave? Well, uh, when Kublai Khan was getting older, we uh, were worried that the Mongols wouldn't want us to uh, stay there anymore. So we asked Kublai Khan if we could turn to our homeland uh, in Venice in, in uh, 1295. But he wanted us to stay. So when we did leave, we got back to Europe and uh, <coughs> Got back to Europe and then we uh, shared the stories of fortune to uh, everyone in, uh, in Europe. Now, you know, it since it sounds like such a cool place, it sounds like you had some really cool experiences there. Did you ever go back? I would have loved to go back, but uh, fortunately I couldn't. Uh, well, um, I guess that's all we have time for. Uh, it was good talking with you, and we'll continue our interview in just a moment. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Monica. I'm the Eurasian Broadcasting Company. Earlier on this day, Colin and Abe and I went around the property talking to Marco Polo, and now we have Marco Polo in our interview. <laughs> Colin was talking about your trip to China, trip to Kublai Khan's court. What happened after all of it? Well, after that, I returned to Venice, and I wed and had three children. I also became the commander of a ship in the war between the Genoese and the Venetians. Were you on the Venetian side? I was. Okay. Well, it's so nice to hear. What happened after all of that? Well, actually, my ship got captured at one point, and I was thrown in jail for a year. It wasn't that bad, though, because I met a man named Rossicello da Pisa, and he wrote down all the stories I told him about going to uh, China and the courts of Kublai Khan. I mean, well, obviously, you guys got released from jail. Were those stories published anywhere? They yeah. actually were. He published them in books to Europe, and he called the books The Travels of Marco Polo. <laughs> How fitting. How did the Europeans take this book? Did they like it, hate it? What happened? They actually didn't believe it at first. They thought Rossicello was just writing a work of fiction. I kept telling them that it was true, but I guess Rossicello had elaborated a bit too much. Yeah, a little bit. After everything happened... Did anyone prove the truth of it? Afterwards, historians uh, gathered enough information to prove that it actually had gone and visited the Mongolian Empire. I'm glad that happened. Everything got resolved. After everything, after your book got published, all of that, how did the Europeans take this? How did it influence them? Well, uh, it did influence them a lot, I think. It uh, showed them about the vast East that they knew nothing about, really. It showed them, it told them about the people, the government, the culture, religions, technology, plants, animals, a whole bunch of things that they had really know nothing about in the East. And it influenced uh, kings, merchants, uh, for trading, it explorers, it led a lot of explorers to want to go and explore the East. You are known as the godfather of explorers, so yeah. that is pretty proven. And uh, helped people uh, find natural resources and allied yeah. with the Mongolian Empire since they knew more about them. If you could go back to China, what would you do? I'd probably go back to the courts of Kublai Khan to uh, visit some old friends and see the Mongolian Empire. Nice, nice. So, last question, a little bit sad. How did you end up dying in the end? Well, I died in uh, 1324. I was about 70 years old. And uh, I'm at home in Venice, so I died peacefully. That's good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's just about it with Marco Polo. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. I want to stick around for the world premiere of the Netflix series, Marco Polo, right after this. Also, stick around for tomorrow. We will be interviewing Xing Chuan Di, the oh, first cool. emperor of China. That was interesting. Nice to see you, Marco. Nice to see you, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.